We have huge breaking news. Jeremy Swayman and the Bruins stalemate is over. He is officially signed. We'll discuss the contract and how it affects the Bruins coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some significant breaking news. The stalemate between the Bruins and Jeremy Swayman has come to an end. It's ended peacefully with a long-term contract. I know after all the comments we've seen publicly from Cam Neely and the agent Louis Gross, you know, I think a lot of us had concerns that the relationship could go bad or go sour and could result in, you know, maybe not being a long-term Bruin, but right now it looks like that may have been avoided. We'll see how things play out on a long-term basis, but Swayman and the Bruins have agreed to an eight-year deal with an average annual value of $8.25 million. Now, uh, there's also about $20 million worth of signing bonuses uh, included in this. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm, but I assume there's a, a lot of trade protection in there as well. Um, but, of course, we know that at the press conference the Bruins had at the beginning of last week, Neely went out and said there were 64 million reasons why that he should be playing. That would be eight times eight. Obviously, at that point, then the agent came out and said, that's the first we've heard of this. We've never had uh, you know, any offers with that kind of money on it. And, well, now we got them up a little bit more. But, of course, with the Bruins cap situation, they really couldn't go too much more anyway. Um, originally, though, we heard that Swingman wanted $10 million, and then that was clarified that it was more like the McAvoy contract, which is in that 9.5 range. And, well, then we knew the Bruins didn't want to go past 8 times 8 When they had their press conference earlier this week and Neely made those comments, that felt like a line in the sand. This is our absolute best and they did come up a, a tiny bit here but at the end of the day i think they settled on a number that's a lot closer to what boston wanted than what swayman wanted but there's definitely give and take on both sides and if you look at the negotiation history that we learned through elliot freeman the other day you know there were times when they were kind of lowballing in that the offer wasn't on that six uh, six and a half range uh, earlier into the off season so uh, you know jamie swayman's proven to be one of the top goalies uh, one of the best young goalies in the league and certainly believes a lot in himself and after going through arbitration last year you could tell especially if you watch the amazon series that the nhl just released uh, nhl faceoff he was even talking about it in there that that was a really hard process to go through and it's really hard hearing all the things that your team is arguing against you why they should pay you less money that you're not worth what you're looking for it's a tough process um so between that and this i I really had a lot of legit concerns, I think, about the long-term viability of this relationship working out. And just because he signed an eight-year contract doesn't absolutely mean that things will be rosy the whole time. But generally, um, you know, they have a way to find peace here and for this to work out long-term for both sides. I know Swayman wanted to be a Bruin. I never had any doubt there. Uh, it was just a matter of whether or not the Bruins felt like they could move forward with his contract demands. And they... Have an agreement here. Louis Gross, his agent, is notorious for these long, drawn-out contract negotiations. We've seen it happen with multiple other clients in the past. Uh, this is nothing new. Um, you know, he drives a hard bargain, and at the end of the day, it's done. So Swayman goes to the Bruins, eight point two five million. So he ends up getting basically after what we thought was the Bruins' final offer, a couple extra million bucks. So two more million, sixty-six million dollars uh, over eight years. Um, Swayman will be available now. I'm not sure if he'll play opening night because he's missed the bulk of training camp, but he will have uh, a few days here to get himself ready, and we'll see. But I think uh, for Bruins fans, you should be a lot more comfortable knowing that Jonas Corporasalo doesn't have to have this huge workload early in the season um, because, you know, at this point, he's not proven that he can play anywhere near that level, and it could have been a big impact on the team. Um, but, you know, Corpus Allo's performance this year will definitely be one worth monitoring, and I'm I'm pretty confident he can play better than what he did last year, but how much better is the question. I don't remain to be seen and how good of a tandem these guys can be compared to what the Bruins have had, you know, somewhat uh, spoiled with riches in the last few years with Swayman and Allmark, and one of the best tandems we've seen in modern history here. So let me know your thoughts on the Swayman contract in the comment section here. We'll talk about it further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.